And so in this third and final example, we're going to um, stream information from Brainframe, and we're going to send a WeChat notification to my account uh, when I uh, trigger an alert in Brainframe. So for this uh, particular demo, we're going to use the um, the get zone status stream. So we're going to use um, this API. And so in this API, you are essentially, um, let's see here, you're going to receive a stream of objects as brain frame processes them. So uh, what you see in the video, those bounding boxes and everything, we're going to receive all of those bounding boxes and we're going to receive them for every zone. We'll receive the timestamps, all of the objects inside of the zones, inside of the um, entering, exiting, all of these different things. And then we're going to look for alerts and we're going to send a WeChat notification to me. Great. So let's see here. So just like the other scripts, we're going to import the library. And we're going to set the URL. And we're just going to use the same URL as the client. Great. And so um, what we want to do here is we need to receive a stream from Brainframe. So Brainframe handles its current state using something called zone statuses. So you can call um, an API here called uh, get latest zone statuses, which will pull one time and then print the results. So let me show you what that looks like. So essentially I ran this once and it's um, a pretty long data structure, but it's telling me everything that's what happening inside of the stream. And so the, the problem with this is that if we wanted to, we uh, get real time results, we would have to uh, pull brain frame all the time and, and constantly ask it like, hey, what's the latest status? What's the latest status? What's the latest status, right? And um, that's very slow, it's inefficient, and also um, it's gonna get a lot of repeat results. So here you can see the timestamp changing over time, right? But there's a better way to do this. So we have a, a API called get latest, um, get a zone status stream. So, And so in this case, Brainframe will make one request and it will um, iterate over the response over a period of time. And then uh, Brainframe server will push the results to you. So from here, we can, we can iterate over it. So we can do, we can receive the packets one by one and then we can print them out here. And so in this case, Brainframe, as soon as it gets a result, it will send it to us. So you can see that it's printing a lot slower, but now we get results um, as fast as the capsules can process them. And so now what we wanna do is we're going to go into the client and we're going to make a, um, an alert here. So give me a moment here. We've got min confidence. Okay, so we want to go into task configuration here and we want to make a zone for my desk. So Alex's home office, Alex's desk. How about that? We'll just call it Alex's desk. And oh, no, sorry. I need to make a region, Alex's desk. There we go. And so I'll just draw out a region here that um, will contain my desk and me. And so now you can see that I'm inside of that region. And now what we wanna do is we want to create an alarm, but let's go ahead and let's just run this real quick. 
And so what you'll see here is, um, let's uh, put this into a, a text editor. So you can see uh, Alex's desk here, and you can see the name, so it's Alex's desk. We can see how many people have entered, exited. We can see that currently there's a person inside of Alex's desk, and we have the coordinates and the detection confidence for that person. And so now what we want to do is we want to um, create an alert. So we're going to use BrainFrame's alert system. And so let's uh, go here. And, and so I'm going to use uh, an alarm. Sorry, I need to create an alarm. So uh, I'm going to have an alarm that triggers when I leave my desk. So when there's equal to zero people in Alex's desk. So this is an alarm specific to this zone that I just created. There's the default zone, which is the screen, but right now we wanna focus only on Alex's desk. And so this will trigger when I leave my work desk. So this could be useful for my boss to keep track of when I'm no longer working. So, okay. And you can see here, there's the zone and it belongs, this is the alarm and it belongs to Alex's desk. Great. And uh, just to, for example, let's just go ahead and trigger it. So if I leave my desk, you'll see that it immediately gets triggered. And if I come back, it'll be happy again. Just give it a moment. And so here's a screenshot of me escaping work. So now what we wanna do is we want to receive those alerts here and we want to send them to WeChat. So um, the documentation for, for the uh, statuses API is here. It's, it's uh, a pretty complicated object. It's basically all of the different um, uh, it's all of the different streams, all of the different zones, all of the different objects inside of those zones. So there's a whole lot of information that goes into this. So I'll, I'll try to kind of skip through the exact um, parsing of this. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to get all of the zone statuses for each stream. And then we're going to get all of these zone names and the zone status for those. And then we're going to um, we're going to look for alerts. So for alert. So. Um, So right now, if I run this, uh, we probably won't see anything, right? Nothing going on here. But if I leave and I trigger an alert, we'll be able to see that there's an ongoing alert. And so the reason that it prints over and over is because that alert is ongoing. So you can see that the moment it started was at this timestamp. And when it finally ended, it was this timestamp. So we have the start time and the end time for the alert. So we want to notify WeChat as soon as possible that Alex left his, his uh, desk. That's just not good, right? And so, um, but we might also want to know how long Alex left his desk for. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for alerts that uh, already have an end time, that have already finished. So if alert.endTime is not none. And so here's where we can, we can get information about that alert.
so here I'm calculating the amount of time I was away from my workbench, right? So we want to minimize that, right? So that I get a lot of work done during the day. And so I'm going to uh, restart this. And so you'll see if I trigger it, it won't print anything until the alert is over. So I'll come back here. And you'll notice that I left my desk for exactly 11 seconds. So that's that's pretty much unacceptable, right? So I'm going to send a uh, WeChat a, um, message, basically if I leave more than sec five seconds. So now um, for the WeChat portion of this, I'm going to use a library called It's Chat. So this is uh, just the library I found. We did not make it. So uh, pip, pip install hit chat. So I don't know if you can see this, but here's the command I'm running. Great. And so now I can import all of this. And I'll just import it as WeChat. So here at the front, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to log in and I'm going to um, send a notification. So for example, uh, itchat.send message uh, notifications from brain frame have been enabled. And I'm going to send it to uh, my file transfer, my file helper thing, because this is a message just to me. I don't want to uh, spam anybody, right? And uh, after this uh, script ends, which um, you can run uh, wechat.logout. So now here, it will just put a WeChat send message and uh, we'll say um, brain frame alert. And um, now what I wanna do is I want to get the alarm name. So in this case, I want to know the exact name for the alarm. So right now we have an alert, and that's just a, a triggered alarm. So what I want to do is I'm going to do I'm going to use the uh, brain frame uh, get zone alarm. I'm going to get the zone alarm so I can know the name of the alarm, and I want to send that through WeChat so I can know exactly how Alex messed up. Zone alarm and so i can use the alert dot alarm id here and so now i'm going to send a message to to myself here um, and i'll print the alarm name and we'll print the uh, the duration and so essentially i'm just going to get uh the alarm name and the duration, how long Alex was away from his desk. So I think this should work. Let's go ahead and try it. Um, so I need to uh, be able to log into my WeChat here so you'll see a, a QR code, but luckily it's not a security risk since if you run this, um, it'll just log into your, your WeChat and you'll get lots of messages. So the way this works is we need to get the UR code and then I'm scanning that with my phone. And then um, I have no better way of doing this, but you can see here I have uh, received the message. Oh no, and so I left my, my desk, so that should trigger it. You can see Alex left his desk for 10 seconds. Um, and I received a alert here on my WeChat telling me that I left my desk for 10 seconds. Um, let's see here. Great. So this is sort of the, uh, these are just three sort of 
short examples for different things you can do with BrainFrame and the API just to get your feet wet, right? And so for, for this third one, I thought it would be fun to show WeChat. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. <laughs>